What's up guys? My name is Tai Zen. Welcome to the Cryptocurrency.Market channel. This is a trading, investing, entrepreneurship channel. And it's not just any type of trading, investing, or entrepreneurship channel. This channel is about doing the stuff that's real world. You know, it's not the stuff that's airy fairy, sounds good in theory, but doesn't work in the real world. You know, um, I'm 47 years old today and I struggled for many years. I, I came to uh, America as a Vietnamese um, refugee. And uh, we unfortunately, we were not one of those Asian families that came to America and became wealthy, opened up convenience stores and all that stuff, gas stations and stuff like that, or became doctors and engineers. Uh, my family came from a very small fishing village and we uh, struggled to come to America as refugees. And we ended up living in a poor ghetto neighborhood uh, because we were too broke and if you live in a black ghetto neighborhood the land the housing and everything is a lot cheaper so that's where we ended up to save money and to reduce our living expenses and you know when you live in a poor ghetto neighborhood you know uh, there's a lot of people doing things that's you know like selling drugs stealing cars and stuff like that I ended up hanging around the wrong people sold drugs uh, in my neighborhood with all my black friends ended up in prison and ended up doing nearly 14 years uh, in prison, okay? Now, some of you guys may or may not know this, but in America, there's two types of criminal justice system, okay? One is called the state level, and one is called the federal level, okay? And originally, I got arrested for drugs in the state level, and it's a very, very small amount of drugs. It was like 65 grams of cocaine, right? And in the state of Texas, that is not enough to put somebody in prison. Uh, I mean, as much as what people say about you know, the harsh sentencing and, and the criminal justice system in America, at the state level, I, I believe that they are very fair. Um, you know, I was a teenager at that time, I was only 18 years old, and they did not want to put me in prison for the rest of my life just because I had uh, a few grams of cocaine and, uh, and, and drugs. So they were gonna give me probation, but the prosecutor and the police did not like, the, the police department did not like the fact that I refused to cooperate with them and refused to snitch on my friends and become a tattletale and become a rat for them or go set up innocent people for drugs so that I can get a reduced sentence. That's just not my style, okay? I don't, you know, I will take responsibility for what I did, but I will not shift that responsibility to another human being that is innocent. I am not going to go and set up innocent people for drugs just so that I can get a reduced sentence, okay? So I remember telling the prosecutor that, that I was not gonna do that, and he said, we'll see, we'll see. You wanna be tough, you wanna be hard-headed, you wanna be stubborn, we'll, we'll see how tough you are. You're not the first teenager that I've worked with. We'll, we'll see how tough of a teenager you are, okay? And so what he did was they turned me over to the federal system, to the federal court system. In, in other words, like, there's no reason for me to be in the federal courts because my case was a state level case. It happened inside the city, it was inside you know, the county, the city limits, everything. There's absolutely, there was no federal agents involved in my case. There's nothing that would warrant turning me over to the federal law enforcement, okay? But they did. And the reason for that was because um, in the uh, criminal uh, 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 system, it's called um, um, prosecutorial forum shopping, okay? That means that the state level police are shopping around to see what jurisdiction that they can push me into so that I can have a harsher sentence, okay? So that's called prosecutorial forum shopping and that's illegal. Like, you have to be prosecuted where you are arrested, where the crime was committed and, and at the jurisdiction and at the level that, you are, that, that you're in. So it was illegal for them to send me over to the federal system because I, there was no federal law enforcement agencies involved in the investigation of my drug case, okay? So because of that, I was sent to the federal system, and many of you guys don't know this, but in the federal system, they have pretty much a 100% conviction rate, meaning that whoever they indict, you are going to prison. Like, there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. There, there's no you know, probation, none of that nonsense. You are going to prison when you get indicted with a federal indictment in America. Now, many of you guys say, Tai Tai, you're wrong. That's not true, right? The feds only have, the federal system only has a 98% conviction rate. That's not true. Now, first of all, guys, you should already know that if somebody has a federal 
98% conviction rate, you already know that that's not true. That, that can't possibly be true that you go out there and arrest 100 people and all 98 people are guilty. That, that, that's just not realistic. I say that it's 100% and it's not 98% is because the feds don't care if you're innocent or not. If you're indicted, you go to prison. That, that's, just, that's just word, okay? Now, fortunately, you know, thanks to the greatest president that America has ever, uh, ever, call, uh, ever had, his name is President Donald J. Trump, right? He realized that that is illegal. Like, in order to be a powerful nation, a nation of laws, you have to have justice. You have to have the right justice, okay? And so recently he signed a bill called the Justice Reform Bill, and that, that bill right now will have taken away probably 80, 90 percent of the prison sentence that I had to do. So right now, I'm in the process of filing back in the courts, right, to, to, um, to uh, get my sentence reduced, okay, in courts, me and my brother. And he has seven more years in prison, and thanks to this uh, uh, presidential reform, uh, the justice reform bill that President Trump signed, right, into law, it, it's now going to give my brother an immediate release because neither one of us were supposed to be in the federal system to begin with. Neither one of us were supposed to get the lengthy prison, the drug sentences that we, we, we got, you know. So because of that, I, you know, appreciate what President Trump did to reduce uh, my brother's sentence. And you might say, well, Ty, you know, you, you know, it's no big, you know, who cares? You know, you're, you're already out of prison. Even if the courts reduce your sentence right now, it's only on paper, uh, you know, they're not going to come back and take away, you, they're not going to give back the 14 years that I already did in prison. You're right, you're absolutely correct on that, okay? You're absolutely correct on that, and I agree with you on that, but I want to be able to show my kids and, and, and my grandkids later on that I did not commit the crimes that the government accused me of committing. Yes, I am guilty, I am guilty of drugs, but I'm not guilty of the drugs that they accuse me of, you know, because the crime that I was supposed to, uh, 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 the, crime that, uh, the crimes that I committed was supposed to get probation in the state level and at most 18 months in the federal level. But because they did not like the fact that I did not cooperate with them and become a snitch for them because most of the people in the federal prison system are all snitches, right? They're all snitches. Most, most of the guys that you see go to federal prison, more than likely over 90% of them are a bunch of rats and a bunch of snitches, okay? So I was fortunate you know, that I held my nuts and that I, you know, stayed strong and stayed to my beliefs, you know, and I did not go and set up innocent people for drugs just so I can get a reduced sentence. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys, okay, the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys, even though this is a cryptocurrency trading and investing channel, because like, like you guys have been watching me for a long time and you guys know that I share the facts, the reality, the truths that I've seen, the struggles I had to go through to become wealthy and retire early in my mid-40s, right? I remember when the, pro the federal prosecutor, right, his name is Henderson, okay? I still remember his name to this day, right? He looked like a vampire, right? Tall, white dude, about six foot three, six foot two. You know, he was half bald. You know, I don't know how a guy that just came out of college, I mean, a guy that's still young is, is balding so quick, but anyways, I remember him trying to get me to cooperate with law enforcement to snitch on other people and to set up innocent people for drugs, okay? The reason why he wanted me to do that is so that he can boost his career, right? And I was not about to go set up innocent people or set up other people, right, for, for drugs just so that I can get a reduced sentence, right? I will take responsibility for, I will take the punishment for what I did. I'm not going to shift that responsibility and that punishment to another human being that did not commit a crime, right? Or did not break the law just so that I can get a reduced sentence when I'm the one who broke the law, okay? So, uh, to me, that, that's a very cowardly act and I refuse to go down as a coward, okay? I refuse to go down as a coward or a dishonorable man, okay? I, I just refuse to do that, okay? Um, that's just not in my nature, that's not in my style, okay? I refuse to be a coward or a dishonorable man man, okay? So that's why I chose not to cooperate with them or, or snitch out other people, okay? And I remember the prosecutor telling me, I remember the prosecutor telling me, because I was 18 years old, I was handcuffed, and, and I was handcuffed, and my foot was shackled, you know, and I was handcuffed to the table and everything, so it's not like I can say anything. But I remember the prosecutor breathing down my neck 
putting his face in the side of my face like this, telling me, you know, you think you're a badass? You think you're hard-headed? You want to be hard-headed? You want to be stubborn? You want to be hard-headed? You want to be stubborn? I'm going to show you how to be hard-headed and how to be stubborn. I'm going to show you, okay? And he goes, and you know, me being a teenager and being arrested and me hating the cops at that time, I no longer hate the cops, but at that time, you know, growing up in the ghetto, we were all taught to hate cops, you know. So, you know, um, and so I looked at him and I was being a smart ass and I, and I asked him, I said, oh really, yeah, teach me. How, how, how should I be hard-headed? How, how should I be stubborn, right? So I, I was being hard-headed to him and I was being a smart aleck, right? And I remember him telling, yeah, you want to be a tough guy? You want to be hard-headed? You want to be stubborn? Okay. I promise you, you will never, ever see daylight again. Ever. You will never, ever see sunlight again. And what he means by that is not that, you know, when I'm in the prison yard or something, the sunlight is not going to be on me. You know, that's not what he means. When, 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 when the law enforcement and the police and the prosecutor or the courts say that you'll never see sunlight again, what they mean is that they're going to make sure that you rot in prison and that you never come back out. Okay, so at that time, right, I ended up getting a 15-year sentence for drugs. Now, now, keep in mind, guys, I know it sounds like a lot, but in the state courts, I would have gotten probation, which means I would never have even gone to prison, okay? And then in the federal system, if they would sentence me correctly and not wait for President Trump to, you know, reform the justice system and force all the courts to sentence people correctly to what they were indicted for and found guilty in court for, Right? What happened was that they, uh, uh, um, they found me guilty of one drug and then sentenced me to some other crap drug, okay? And, and gave me more time for it, all right? So that was illegal. And that's what the new law that uh, President Trump signed into law, the Justice Reform Bill, that's what it does is that it corrects that, which says that you have to sentence the prisoners, the defendants, to what they were indicted for and what they were found guilty in court for. You can't indict them from A, Go to trial and find them guilty for A, and then when it's time for sentencing, sentence them to B or C or D. Okay, you, you can't do that. That's illegal. So that's 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 why I'm going to get my sentence reduction uh, uh, because of that. Okay, so the courts have to go back and correct my sentence because of, uh, of that. Because Trump is telling them you got to do the law. You got to you know follow the law and interpret the law correctly. You can't just sentence the people to whatever you want to just because you don't like them. Okay, this is our laws in America. People violate those laws, and this is the punishment. That's the punishment you give them. You can't just give them a different punishment just because you don't like that person. Okay? So, um, the reason why I'm saying this, guys, is that when I went into prison the first time, I remember that the, uh, the people, there was kids in there that would cut their wrists. They would take a plastic spoon, and they would grind it on the concrete floor into a sharp piece of plastic, and they would cut their wrists because there's no knives or, or things like that in prison. So they would cut their wrists, they would take the sheet, bed sheets, they would roll it up into a rope, and they would hang themselves on a five foot tall bunk bed. Now imagine that, guys. Imagine trying to hang yourself, you're six foot tall, and imagine trying to hang yourself off of a five foot tall bunk bed, okay? You literally have to really, really wanna no longer live in order to do that, because you have to hang yourself at sideways like this. Okay, because you can't dangle, so you gotta like dangle at a at a slope like that. So it's it's very sad, guys. It's it's very sad to even talk about it. it. It even gives me the chills inside right now to even have to remember those things and talk about these things with you. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is that when I saw those teenagers doing that, and I was a teenager myself at 18 years old, right? I realized, you know what? I have to be careful. I have to be careful because. I have to be really hard-headed and stubborn. I have to be really, really hard-headed and stubborn or else I'm going to end up like those other weak teenagers, those mentally weak teenagers. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to die in prison. I, I, said, I told myself, no matter what happens, I realized, man, I made a mistake. I got to get over this. I got to get past this and rebuild my life. I cannot die in prison. I am not going to die in prison, okay? I'm not going to let somebody kill me in prison, and I'm not going to let somebody, you know, you know, rape me or sexually assault me in prison. I'm not. I'm going in intact, 
you know, mentally, spiritually, you know, and I'm going to come out mentally, physically, spiritually intact. Okay, I'm not going to be broken. Okay, and I realized that I had to be hard-headed. I saw so many people quit and give up on their life when I was in there, and I just said, no, man. Every day I reminded myself, every week I reminded myself, right, that I was not going to quit and I was not going to give up. I remained vigilant, I remained hard-headed, and I remained stubborn. And I always remembered what I told that federal prosecutor, okay? I told him when he was in my face telling me that I would rot in prison and never see sunlight again, I told him that not only will I come out and see sunlight and my butt was going to be intact and I was not going to get raped by another prisoner or anything like that, you know, and that I'm going to come out intact and then come out mentally, physically stronger than I was when I came in as a teenager. I told that federal prosecutor that wait and see because I'm going to come out and be even more successful than you are and you will still be here doing your prosecutor job, okay, your government job, okay. And just so you guys know, in America, in, under American culture, like in Asia over here, if you work in the government, that's very prestigious and everything. In China and places like that, you work in the government, it's prestigious. In America, it's the complete opposite. If you work in the government, it's because you're a loser, okay? So because of that, you know, by me telling him that he was going to still be there working in the government, you know, that's like me saying that, you know what, you're a loser now, and when I come out, you'll still be a loser, and I'm going to be way ahead of you, okay? Now, needless to say, I was right when I came out. I looked online, looked at the courts, and guess who was still there as the prosecutor there? The frickin' same prosecutor that I considered a loser, okay? Nowadays, I don't consider him a loser. I actually consider him a hero. You know why? Because he did the right thing. His job is to put away people that are breaking the laws in America, and even though I don't like the fact that he sentenced me to a crime that I didn't commit, right? I should have never been involved in drugs in the first place. I can't go out there and break the laws in America, sell drugs, and then bitch and complain that he, they sentenced me to the wrong drug. Okay? That, to me, that doesn't make any sense. No one in their right mind is going to think that that makes sense. Okay? So, anyways, right? Henderson, if you're out there listening right now, I know you're an old fart right now, and you're still a prosecutor, but you know what? I appreciate what you did, because when you put me in prison, it took me off the streets because I didn't know how to get off the streets. Okay? So, I appreciate that. I'm not going to hold it against you. You did your job. You did the right thing, right? And good, more, more power to you, man. Okay? So, I'm here today where I'm at because you put me in prison back when I was a teenager. And it made, forced me to grow up and become a real man instead of remain a snowflake teenager. Okay? So, anyways, guys. The reason why I share this with you, okay, is now... Right? Let's apply these concepts of being hard-headed and being stubborn in the crypto trading and investing. Okay? When I first opened up my trading account, I had to borrow money from somebody else. I was so scared I was going to lose that money that I followed all my rules. I did everything. Okay? There's another issue that deals with margin and leverage that really helped prevent me from losing the entire account. So I made money on, on, on that first account that I opened, the first $10,000 account. But subsequently, after that, I realized when I was able to make a little bit of money, I thought I was, you know, holier than thou. So I went out, saved up some money, opened up my own account, right? So I traded my own money so I didn't have to split the profits with somebody else. And guess what, guys? I got slaughtered. Went and opened up a third account, saved up some money, went and recouped, worked my ass off, you know, went and made more money, saved up some money, went and opened up another trading account. Bam, within, you know, a few months, right? Lost it all, came back. And I did this, guys, eight, nine, ten times. I, I did it so many times, I cannot remember exactly the exact number of how many times I did it. But I know it was more than eight, nine times. Okay? Somewhere around there. And throughout this whole process, guys, I remain hard-headed and I remain stubborn. Okay? I refuse to give up. I refuse to ever give up. I said, man, I, am going, I gave myself ten years after I come out of prison to learn how to trade. I didn't say that I gave myself 10 years after I came out of prison to retire. I said I gave myself to become a consistently profitable trader. I gave myself 10 years, okay? And I planned that even when I was in prison. And, and just so you guys know, the reason why I came up with 10 years, that number, was because I figured that since I was so stupid, I didn't, I didn't even have a high school degree at that time, right? And, you know, since I'm not academically inclined, all my high school friends, they took four years to get to college. 
and the highest I think took like six years okay so just to be safe on the safe side okay I gave myself four years plus six years which is ten years I said hey you know what I probably am a slow learner I'm probably stupid I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed I know that okay and, and that's that's important guys it's important to know when you're not the sharpest tool in the shed okay um, and what happened was I gave myself 10 years because I figured you know what I come out I'm 30 you know 34 35 years old at that time hey if it takes me 10 years to be able to make money consistently in trading I'll be doing that at 45 years old and I'll be very very happy with myself that you know what I lost half my life in prison already and, I, and if I can do that in 10 years right I would be very very happy and I was vigilant I was hard-headed and I was very very stubborn I just refused to give up on it and I'll be honest guys I almost gave up trading almost like three times three times I think somewhere around the third account that I lost I, I wanted to cry man I, I really did I didn't but I really wanted to okay because I was so frustrated that I was trading and losing money and just I make money, lose money, make money, lose money, make money, lose money. I could never ever quit my day job and just rely on my trading. Okay, because I was never confident that I was going to be able to hold on to the profits. I would make money, I would double my account, I would triple my account, I would lose it. Double, triple my account, lose it. I would triple my account, quadruple my account, lose it. Okay? And, and, and it was just so consistent that I remember there was times like somewhere around the sixth or seventh or eighth account that I opened up to trade I would just go through the motions I would just go through the motions I knew I was gonna double or triple this account it's only a matter of time I knew I could do that right and but the thing was keeping it keeping in that money was the problem okay and I knew that I could make it but I, I really could not quit my day job because I knew at some point I was going to lose all that again and have to reload my account again okay so but I was very very hard-headed I was very very hard-headed and very stubborn and not quit and give up even though I came close three times you know I still stuck to it and now I'm happy to say that after 11 12 years you know 11 or 12 years somewhere around there you know I was able to finally retire you know and quit my day job and just retire and I've been retired now you know for like uh, what is it um, over two years now you know so I'm very very happy about that and the reason why I'm sharing this video with you guys is this okay is because as you guys go through your trading and investing career you're gonna run into patches in the road you're gonna hit into bumps you know it's not gonna be like a smooth sailing road it's not gonna be a smooth road and I'm sharing this with you guys okay because I know many of you guys out there are serious about trading and serious about investing you know and right now since the crypto market is booming but I know some of you guys have done Forex I know some of you guys have done commodities I know some of you guys have done stocks in the past and I just want to share with you guys that regardless of what sticking point that you're going through okay one of the biggest things you know I, I remain hard-headed and I remain stubborn but I want you guys to realize something okay there is a time to be hard-headed and there's a time to be stubborn okay you want to be hard-headed and you want to be stubborn in becoming a consistently profitable and successful trader that's what you want to be hard-headed and stubborn about what you don't want to be hard-headed and what you don't want to be stubborn about is this you don't want to be hard-headed and stubborn about something that you don't know or something that you have not been educated on for example if you don't know how to size your bets correctly you want to be educated on that if you don't know how to do technical analysis right to give you a consistent entry into the markets you need you you you, you need to be vigilant and hard headed and stubborn in figuring that out okay don't sit there and then you don't know these things if you don't know how to identify a trend okay you, you don't want to be hard headed and just say yeah I'm just gonna keep doing the same nonsense that I'm doing the same uneducated stuff that I'm doing and hope that it changes okay you don't want to do that when I say that you want to be stubborn what I'm saying is that you want to be stubborn in not giving up you want to be hard-headed in not giving up but you don't want to be hard-headed in doing the same thing that's not working you don't want to be stubborn about doing the same thing that's not working okay 
get educated learn how to do it correctly now quick plug for our cryptocurrency investing blueprint right if you are serious about trading investing and you know that you're one of those people that's open-minded right and 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 you know that if you were taught that how to do this correctly, that you know that you can make it profitable, right? I highly invite you to consider getting the cryptocurrency investing blueprint at www.cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint, okay? Cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint. I believe that is the absolute best training for trading and investing in the cryptocurrency markets. It is the absolute best. There is no other program out there that is more comprehensive, that is more complete, and it's more realistic. Okay, that's the key, right? You got a lot of these clowns out there, you got a lot of these kids out there that have never lost an account, have never traded stocks, have never traded futures, have never traded Forex, have never traded options, and they're trying to teach trading. Like how the hell did you come into crypto and all of a sudden know about trading? Our team came from a background. We flew around the country and taught people how to trade stocks, futures, forex, and options every week, right? From 2010 all the way to 2007 before we created this cryptocurrency investing blueprint. So we have lots of years of trading and investing experience and trading and investing education and teaching experience so we can convey that knowledge to someone else. If you are serious about it and you know that if you were taught the right thing and that you are actually going to do it, I highly recommend that you guys get a copy of the Cryptocurrency Investing Blueprint at www.cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint, okay, blueprint, all right? So saying that, right, I want to get back to talking about being hard-headed, being stubborn, okay? I remember, right, talking to a trader one time and I said to him, I said, hey man, you know, you're jumping around from one technical analysis strategy to another to another. Like every time I see you, you're sharing two or three different strategies with me, right? How in the world are you going to make money off of hundreds and hundreds of strategy, right? You need a strategy, at most, one strategy, primary strategy, and one pri uh, secondary strategy for a trending market a primary and a secondary strategy for a sideways market and the same thing for a down uh, market. That's it, buddy. That's it. How many do you need? Okay? And he just refused. He was adamant. He was stubborn. He was hard-headed that the more technical analysis he learned and the more strategies that he learned that he would be a consistently profitable trader. Until this day, he is still not a consistently profitable trader. And I kept telling him, hey, you know, I look at his trading records and I keep telling him, I said, man, you are sizing your bets incorrectly, man. You need to stick with one strategy and size your bets correctly. Do not use more than 1%. And he just refused to believe me. I told him that mathematically, you cannot become profitable as a trend trader if you are risking more than 1% or 2% of your entire portfolio on a single trade. I kept telling him, mathematically, that does not work. If you do the math yourself, or if you learn how to do the math yourself, you will see the same things that I'm seeing, right? I told him about, hey, me and my uh, trading buddy, David, he used to work at the Xbox project at Microsoft. He's, one of, he's a real Asian. He knows all that computer techie nerdy stuff. I asked him to put a simulator together to where I would simulate trades where I would risk more than 1%. I would risk 2%, I would risk 3%, I would risk 5%, I would risk 10%. And consistently, I ran those simulations on thousands, thousands of trades. And not once was I ever profitable, okay, in those thousands of trading simulations where I risked that big of a, my portfolio. Now, I told him that, and he just wouldn't listen, wouldn't believe it, okay, wouldn't believe it. And I did it out in the real life, too. I not, never saw it in real life where it was profitable, and I never saw it in, in, in a simulated environment where it was profitable. So why would I, you, know, you continue doing that? And he was just being hard-headed. He was just being stubborn. I'm sharing this with you guys, is that I want you guys to go out there and be hard-headed and be stubborn about becoming a successful trader. However, I do not want you guys to become hard-headed and stubborn 
about doing the same nonsense that does not work, okay? Or doing the nonsense that you don't know if it works or not and continue doing it. Go learn to do it right. Because if you do it right, you will make back the money that you invest in the training, okay? Let's say that you invest in our cryptocurrency investing blueprint. You might say, oh, this is expensive. Yes, it is. We purposely made it so that it's the most expensive program on the planet for learning trading and investing in cryptocurrencies. We want to have that. We want to be known as the most expensive guys that you can go to that is going to teach you realistically how to make money in the markets, okay? We don't want to be the 99, 99, uh, 95 cent guy. We don't want to be the $50 guy. We don't want to be the $100 guy. We want to be the frickin' Ferrari of training. We are building software, and once we lease the software to our clients, to our, our, our boot camp clients, to our blueprint clients, it's going to help them manage their portfolio, understand the markets better, increase their profit potential, reduce the risk that they have to be exposed to in the markets. We are a serious trading and investing organization. We are not these clowns that put up their programs up on Udemy for 10 bucks and you can buy it, okay? If you think that you can learn how to trade and grow your portfolio into a seven, eight, nine figure portfolio off a $10 Udemy course, you are out of your freaking mind. You are out of your mind. You know what? You should be slapped for thinking something like that could even be possible, okay? So, again guys, I'm gonna end this video and remind you guys to be hard-headed, to be stubborn, to be vigilant, and do not quit and give up in trading. Trading is the only profession, the only skill I know of where one human being can make a million dollars by themselves with a laptop. That's the only profession I know of that you can do that. Nobody else, there's no other profession that I personally know of where one human being can make a million dollars from a laptop, okay, by themselves, okay? You might say, hey, a doctor can, a brain surgeon can, a heart surgeon can. No, they can't because they need dozens of nurses, assistants, and everybody. When I went to go get, when I had the three heart attacks, and each time they put four stents in my heart the first time, two stents the second time, and then two stents the third time, okay? Each of those times, the third time, I, I stayed wide awake. I was so upset that my heart kept clogging up that I stayed awake during the entire surgery. When they went into my groin, and put the two stents in my heart, it hurt like hell, boy. Whew, man, that was painful. Whew, that was no joke. But during that time I was awake, I can see what they were doing on my heart on the, the big screen TV. There was like six people in the room. In order for them to put two stents in my heart, there was like six people in the room, okay? So, that doctor might be a million dollar doctor, but he couldn't do it by himself. He had to have all those assistants around him to do that, okay? So what I'm saying is be hard-headed, be stubborn about becoming a successful trader because once you get it, once you understand the science of trading, you, you are going to be shocked at how much you can make, guys. You are going to be shocked. And no matter what I tell you right now, you are not going to believe it until you actually do it, okay? So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video and I hope that my mistakes, my past life experiences, or will help you reduce the time that it takes for you to become a consistently profitable trader. Again, guys, go get you a copy of the Cryptocurrency Investing Blueprint right today and stop wasting your time. We got a few more years before this cryptocurrency boom is over and you don't wanna wait until it's over and then go learn how to do it. Learn it now while we're in the bear market so you know what to do when we're back up into a bull market, okay? Thanks for watching this video and make sure that you guys follow me on Twitter at Hey Taizen. And if you have friends that are stubborn and are hard-headed about trading and investing and about crypto, go send them this video so they will know where to be hard-headed and be stubborn at, okay? I'll see you guys in the next video.